So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another class of PIB 247. In today's session guys, we are going to discuss the PIB news from 5th to 7th of April 2023. And there are some very important news today. All right. So let's begin with the very first question guys, which says, which of the following, once again, yeah, which of the following statements is are correct about coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure? Now, the first of all, why we are discussing about coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure is because recently Prime Minister Modi has addressed the fifth international conference on disaster resilient infrastructure 2023. So international conference on disaster resilient infrastructure took place recently, the fifth edition, and it took place to provide a platform for member countries to engage and contribute to the disaster resilient infrastructure solution pathways, right? The theme was delivering resilient and inclusive infrastructure pathways for risk informed system practices and investment. And you don't have to remember the theme, it's a lambi theme, you don't have to remember the theme, right? So when it is in news, so let's talk about Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. Remember it was launched in the year 2019. It was uh, launched by the efforts of Prime Minister Modi at the United Nations Climate Action Summit, which took place in New York in the year 2019, right? It was established with an objective to promote the resilience of infrastructure systems to climate and disaster risks, thereby ensuring the sustainable development and also to promote research, development and knowledge sharing in the field of infrastructure risk management, right? So this was the objective. Uh, this were the objectives with which this CDRI was formed in the year 2019. Its headquarters are located in New Delhi. And it is a multi-stakeholder global partnership of national governments, UN agencies, multilateral development banks, financing mechanisms, private sector, academic and knowledge institutions. So these are the stakeholders in Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. And remember, UN agencies are also there. And as of December 2022, there are 39 members consisting of 31 national governments and eight organizations. And after International Solar Alliance, it is the second global alliance which uh, you know which was established by the efforts of the government of india all right so that is all about cdri and let's uh, identify the incorrect statement about cdri so it was launched in 2019 by pm modi at the unit un climate action summit in new york this is correct it is the first major global initiative launched by india it is not the first after isa it is the second so this is incorrect right it is headquartered in geneva no it is headquartered in new delhi so this is also incorrect and as of December 2022, it comprised of 39 members, which consists of 31 national governments and eight organizations. So this is absolutely correct. But we have to identify the incorrect statement. Yes, you need to word focus on the word uh, correct or incorrect. So incorrect but two and three is the correct answer because you you can see here one and four only is uh, one and four only is also there in the option. So you have to be careful while marking the answer. Okay, two and three only is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two, Ministry of Civil Aviation has disbursed an amount of rupees 30 crores to the beneficiaries during financial year 22-23 under PRI scheme for drone and drone components. You have to identify the correct statements about this scheme. So guys, uh, it is in news because uh, a parliamentary reply has been submitted by the Ministry of Civil Aviation headed by Jyoti Raditya Sindhya. Jyoti Raditya Sindhya is the minister. And in the reply, the ministry has said that they have disbursed an amount of 30 crore in the financial year 22-23 under the ELI scheme for drone and drone components. So since it is in news, let's talk about it. Remember it was launched in the year 2021 with the obvious objects of incentivizing the manufacture of drone and drone components in the country to make uh, the indigenous industries globally competitive, right? Nodal industry, it is obviously clear. It is being implemented for a period of three years that is from financial year 23 to up to financial year 2025. Now you must be wondering when it was launched in 2021, how is it that it is being implemented from financial year 23? It is because the scheme was launched in 2021, but the incentives were started from the financial year 22-23. And that's why the implementation period is this, right? The total outlay or the incentives that will be given under the scheme is 120 crores. Okay? Now talking about the support. So remember the support under this scheme is only provided to the companies who are engaged in the manufacturing of drones and drone components in India only, which means there is no uh, inclusion of the foreign companies, right? Now talking about annual sales turnover criteria. So if it is an Indian MSME and startups, then for drone, it is 2 crore and for drone component, it is 0.5 crore or 50 lakh. 
while if it is an indian non msme then in case of drone it is rupees 4 crores while in the case of drone component it is 1 crores right to have the incentive the company should have this much minimum turnover theek hai ji now remember for this scheme the pli rate is 20% of the value addition which is amongst the highest among all the pli scheme and there is this rate has been kept constant at 20% of, of for all the three years while in other pli schemes what happens is that the pli rate reduces every year but in this it is 20% for all the three years right minimum value addition norm has been set at 40% of net sales for drone and drone components which means the the incentives are given uh, only on the value addition theek hai na its coverage also includes developers of drone related software as well so drone related software bhi iske under cover hai and pli for a manufacturer is capped at 25% of the total annual outlay right pli jo hoga production linked incentive that will not be more than 25% uh, of the total annual outlay all right so that is all about uh, this scheme and uh, let's identify the correct statement now it is being implemented for period of 5 years no incorrect it has a total outlay of 120 crores this is correct this is incorrect under it financial support is provided to companies engaged in the manufacturing of drone and drone components in india as well as in the foreign countries no foreign countries companies are not provided the benefits under this scheme its benefit coverage also includes developers of drone related software this is absolutely correct and under it pli rate has been kept at 20% of the value addition yes this is also correct so 2 4 and 5 are correct which means option d is the correct answer 2 4 and 5 moving ahead to question number 3 when was the startup india yatra launched to promote entrepreneurship in rural and non metro regions across the states right so it is a news because recently uh, startup india has completed uh, i believe 7 years of its implementation if i am not wrong so that's why all the initiatives being take uh, all the initiatives under startup india are in uh, you know were provided by the government in one of the releases so usme boss usme jo bahut sare initiatives the that already uh, we have discussed this one was not discussed earlier ye usme naya aaya hai pehli baar aaya hai so that's why i have decided to take this so startup india yatra initiative startup india launched startup india yatra in the year 2017 to promote entrepreneurship in rural and non metro regions across states right this startup india yatra is for helping entrepreneurs to realize their startup dream now what happens under this is that grassroots startup aspirants jo grassroots hai jo village level ke hai ya fir remote areas mein hai these grassroots startup aspirants are provided incubation support mentorship support and funding support under this startup india yatra and under this yatra boot camps were organized in tier 2 and tier 3 districts of the states where participants attended ideation workshops and pitch their ideas right and some northeastern states were also covered in this yatra these are manipur assam tripura arunachal pradesh meghalaya mizoram and nagaland i think sikkim is only uh, which is not there baki all the seven states are there and 179 incubation offers were extended along with the funding of support of 20.1 lakh in northeastern state now this fact is not important for your examination ye maine bas dal diya tha ki northeastern states mein what they have done right so the question is about the launch year of startup india yatra it was launched in the year 2017 option c is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 4 when was the startup champions program and doordarshan launched for showcasing growth of entrepreneurial culture in the country so first of all what is this startup champions program it is remember a one hour weekly program covering stories of award winning or nationally recognized startups its first edition was launched in the year 2021 the second edition was launched in the month of august last year 2022 right it depicted the growth of entrepreneurial culture in the country and it was telecasted in both the languages hindi and english across all the doordarshan uh, channels all right so that is all this much is enough for startup champions program nothing more than this and it was launched in the year 2021 option e is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 5 which is about the gramin krishi mausam seva so which organization is implementing this scheme gramin krishi mausam seva scheme now first of all what this scheme is remember under the scheme what happens is that imd first of all this is being implemented by imd india meteorological department which is under which works under the ministry of earth sciences headed by dr jitendra singh right now uh, under this scheme what happens is that weather advisory weather advisory are being generated and are given to the farmers so that they can work accordingly 
right so this is for benefiting the farming community in the country and under it medium range weather forecast at district and block level for 5 days is is generated for the upcoming 5 days right for the next 5 days what will be the weather forecast uh, what will be the weather how will be the weather this is being forecasted under gramin krishi mausam seva scheme by the imd india meteorological department now this uh, based on this forecast there are 130 agromet field units they prepare agromet advisory on every tuesday and friday for all the districts and blocks which come under uh, their uh, you know their their jurisdiction and these agromet field units are located at state agricultural universities icar institutes iit etc it communicates to farmers to take decision on day to day agricultural operations right ek bar kisan ko uske kisan ko weather ke bare mein pata chal gaya ki upcoming 5 din mein kaisa weather hone wala hai so he can prepare Uh, he can be prepared accordingly all right so this is being implemented by imd option d is the correct answer india meteorological department right and now guys let's move ahead to the questions in short and there are some of the very important questions today in short jin mein zyada explanation ki zarurat nahi hai but these are very very important but if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join this telegram channel the link is provided in the description all right Question number six. Under which ministry Y20 consultation a pan India activity in the run up to the final Youth 20 summit to be held in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh is being conducted, right? So Y20. When we are talking about youth, the ministry must be the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, which is headed by Mr. Anurag Singh Thakur. All right. Option B is the correct answer. Indian Railways has registered highest ever freight loading in financial year 2023. How many million tons freight loading was there? In the financial year 22-23, it was the highest ever. So it was 15-12 million ton, 1,512 million ton freight loading was done in financial year 22-23 by the Indian Railways. All right. Question number eight: Which state will host the second health working group meeting under India's G20 presidency? So where was the first health working group meeting took place? It took place in Tiruvannathapuram in Kerala. Second one will take place in Goa. third one will take place uh, in uh, hyderabad hyderabad of course is in telangana and fourth one will take place in gandhinagar in gujarat all right so this is about the second one so the correct answer is option e goa as on 4th april very very important question over 11.66 crore that is 60% of rural households have been provided with the tap water supply under jal jeevan mission uh, which of the following states or ut so far have reported 100% coverage under this mission So there are five states in the country which have reported 100% coverage. These are Gujarat, Goa, uh, Telangana, Haryana, and Punjab. Right? These are the five states which have reported 100% coverage, and there are three UTs: Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Daman and Diu, and Dadra and Nagar Haveli, and Puducherry. Right? So these are the three UTs and five states which have reported the 100% coverage. Right? So out of all these five, which are these? Telangana is there, Haryana is there, Jammu and Kashmir is not there, Andaman is there. Maharashtra is not there. One, two, and four should be the correct answer. Option B. One, two, and four. Question number ten. During twenty one twenty two, nuclear power reactors reactors generated four seven double one two million units of electricity, which comprises about how much percent of the total electricity generated in the country? Right. So this uh, this information has been given by government of India in the parliamentary reply. So this was only three point one five percent of the total electricity generated in the country all right so nuclear power reactors are contributing uh, not much but yes dheere uh, dheere ye jo capacity hai ye bhi increase hogi question number 11 economic census census is the complete count of all non farm economic establishments located within the geographical boundary of the country now you don't have to remember the number of non farm economic establishments that is a huge number that is not required for the examination i have taken this question so that you guys uh, can know that this economic census is composed and compiled by ministry of statistics and program implementation right option a is the correct answer and this ministry is headed by rao indrajit singh whose lok sabha constituency is gurugram in haryana which is the headquarter of isa of course question number 12 ministry of cooperation has approved one time grant in aid of rupees 30 crores to establish vaikunt mehta national institute of cooperative management as a center of excellence for cooperative education and training so where is this institution located now please don't get confused this institute has not been established 
this institution has been given the responsibility of becoming center of excellence for cooperation education and training okay this was established in 1967 in pune so it is located in pune option b is the correct answer question number 13 when uh, what was india's textile and apparel exports including handicrafts export during financial year 21 22 so this is again an important question uh, the reply uh, based on the reply given by the ministry of textiles so this was 44.44 billion option e is the correct answer question number 14 very very important with which technological company has ministry of information and broadcasting uh, signed a partnership agreement in the field of media entertainment and public awareness so for media entertainment and public awareness ministry of information and broadcasting has signed this agreement with amazon option b is the correct answer and ndjc is the ceo ndjc is the ceo of amazon option b is the correct answer what is the target of constructing or you can say how many amrit sarovar sarovars are targeted to be constructed under mission amrit sarovar by 15th august this year so total 50000 amrit sarovars are targeted to be constructed by 15th august 2023 so option e is the correct answer this is again a very important question guys question number 16 good carvings from which union territory were recently granted a gi tag by dpiit under the ministry of commerce and industry so wood carvings belongs to ladakh and the correct answer is option d ladakh question number 17 again in an important question the government has accorded administrative approval and financial sanction for 10 indigenous specialized heavy water reactors of 700 megawatt each these reactors are planned to be set up by which year at a cost of 1,5000 crores right remember these reactors are planned to be set up by the year 2031 option e is the correct answer and the last question for today which of the following states launched stemi project now remember this is not a new project it is in news because again because of a parliamentary reply stemi project aapko batana hai kaun se state ka hai which was launched with the name to reduce premature mortality from non communicable diseases by one third by adopting advanced health practices and modern technology right so stemi project has a very uh, ajeeb si full form so that full form is not required for you stemi project remember it is of goa and option c is the correct answer all right so that's it for today's class guys i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section and yes uh, notification abhi bhi nahi aaya hai rbi ka we all are waiting for that but please don't uh, let your notification go down uh, notification motivation dekho zuban ka notification ya raha hai bas motivation ki jagah so don't let your motivation go down uh, padhte raho dheere dheere karke aur revise karte raho if you are done with the syllabus uh, do not uh, you know stay idle do not ki aise mat raho ki ab to aapko sab kuch aa gaya keep on revising the things keep on revising the more you revise the more uh, the higher the chances of yours to clear the examination all right and main to hu hi aapke sath agar aapko koi dikkat pareshani hoti hai to you can message me on telegram and on instagram at @mashimanish okay to milte hain fir agli class mein goodbye take care and god bless